I now welcome Maitri Porecha, a noted firebrand journalist working with the Ken. Maitri is an old friend and old means by way of time, not by way of her age. She will share her insights, putting media under the gender lens. Over to you, Maitri. A very good morning, afternoon, or an evening to everyone who's uh, joined us from around the world. And thank you, uh, Shobha and Bobby, for having me here. Uh, I will um, keep my uh, talk short and uh, my, my thoughts very, very uh, limited uh, to, uh, uh, you know, a, a couple of minutes. I am a healthcare journalist working out of uh, India and I have been working in India since the past uh, 12 years. Uh, I like to see, when I put media under the gender lens, I would like to see it in two ways. One would be uh, the reporter themselves uh, and, and how being a male or a female might, you know, kind of uh, affect the way uh, the reporter perceives their work. And uh, secondly, it would be, uh, uh, it would be, you know, sort of reporting on the subject that you are and, and how the gender lens affects the media therein. Uh, uh, starting with uh, uh, the reporter, uh, I feel like the biggest uh, obstacle that, that a female might face in, uh, uh, you know, starting their work in journalism would come from the family. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, it, I can at least speak for myself and uh, I can say that, uh, so my family, uh, uh, so I'm basically like a first generation uh, uh, earner, uh, you know, in, in terms of, uh, you know, a woman earner in my family. Uh, none of uh, the people before me have, uh, you know, sort of uh, forayed out into work or have, you know, sort of, um, uh, you know, gone out there and on money. Uh, and so the patriarchal norms in our uh, family were very, very strong. Uh, I, I was never uh, stopped from, um, you know, going to school or college, but uh, the real challenge uh, was, uh, uh, you know, uh, pro probably started after college where, um, you know, they told me that, you know, you should get married at 19. And uh, so I staved off marriage for like, five, six years, and I, I told them that I want to get into journalism. Nobody understood uh, what it meant or uh, that it was not a nine to five job. Uh, there were times when uh, I had to stay uh, late in office in order to edit, uh, uh, and uh, uh, nobody really understood, you know, why I was staying uh, late or what my work demanded. And uh, uh, I was actually asked to take up a nine to five job in a company because uh, um, you couldn't come, come late at home. Uh, so, 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 so that was like the first, you know, barrier to cross. It eventually, you know, led me to move out of my house because it, it became completely impossible to function in the house and also, you know, sort of work. Uh, uh, so, so those are the limitations. So I, I don't necessarily see any gender bias, particularly in, 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 in the newsroom in terms of employment, because, uh, in in whichever places have been employed, um, it has it has not been male dominated in terms of numbers. Uh, it, it, the, the 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 participation of the females and the males has been equal. Uh, uh, you know, in terms of numbers. Uh, however, the second obstacle, like you once you cross the obstacle at home, the second obstacle that you face is at your workplace. Um, there had been and there have been multiple you know cases of sexual harassment that 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 have occurred in the in 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 our workplaces not necessarily with me only with me but also um, you know i have noticed this within my colleagues uh, so it was normal uh, uh, for you know like editors to ask interns out on you know out on a drink or uh, you know sort of uh, um, invite uh, them to to parties and then uh, uh, you know probably uh, you know sort of bully them or uh, you know it also uh, in, involves you know counting favors so for instance if you have won a fellowship on your own merit but uh, 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 you know and and you ask for you know uh, a recommendation letter 
uh, from your editor or you ask for uh, you know a letter to travel abroad a visa letter uh, i have faced instances where you know this has been held against me and uh, i have been told that uh, uh, you know uh, that i was done a favor to by the editor uh, that 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 you know he he gave me this letter so uh, uh, so you know these kind of situations can always you know kind of put you in awkward positions where uh, you sort of um, have to worry about the fact that you know your uh, if if you how you react in that situation might put your job on the line and uh, uh, there have been instances of um, a lot of women uh, quitting or putting down their papers because uh, you know this uh, this occurred um so so this is what happens at the workplace and then there is uh, an entire um, field to navigate when you go out there to report uh, i remember a particular incident where uh, uh, you know uh, me and one more female photographer were sent to uttar pradesh in order to uh, uh, you know cover the western uh, uh, up elections now uttar pradesh to put it in context is like the largest northern state in india and it is very notorious for um, for its criminal activities um so so when uh, when we were out there in the village um, late at night uh, uh, there were some uh, political uh, uh, party workers uh, who who chased us and and who passed lewd comments they asked uh, uh, they asked our driver if uh, you know who are we where have we come from are we dancers uh uh and uh, and and so we had to so we 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 faced an a real risk of getting ambushed in the fields and and we had to quickly you know kind of pull ourselves out of that situation so uh that 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 definitely led to us not completing our interviews on the field and uh, and when we came back to office our editor asked us uh, uh you know where are those uh, where are those interviews and and we said that Uh, we couldn't do it and then he shouted at us and he said that no you you have to go and get them so fortunately we had those people's numbers so we could like do some kind of damage control but then how do you navigate a space where uh, you know uh, if 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 you've been ambushed or 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 you know you are being uh, uh, you don't have enough protection that's why we felt that um, it's very important to have programs like for instance the culture in say bbc or uh, uh, you know uh, uh, an international wire agency would be very different where uh, they would have um, uh, uh, they would have security they would train the reporter on how to uh, uh, you know like kind of pull yourself out of the field uh, you know there would be an emergency number so if if you know you were in any kind of a problem you could just you know kind of somehow uh, raise an alarm and and there would be some kind of an evacuation mechanism uh, which completely lacks uh, in 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 the in the indian uh, media scenario uh, uh, so uh, so yeah i i just want to rest my case here with uh, three examples and uh, and this is and this is and what i'm saying is not anything new right i mean i'm sure that ev- everyone uh, especially uh, females have had to you know like traverse more obstacles whenever they have had to report and and that that's why it's very important to look at media from the gender lens right so yeah okay uh, uh, thank you matri and uh, we already have a uh, lot many questions and queries and uh, there is one question from uh, just a moment let me uh, we have a question from mensidemi from png that uh, you said the newsroom had females Uh, but what about decision making even if there were many females there was uh, the de- yeah. yeah so uh, right so uh, that's a good question uh, mentioned to me uh, uh, thank you for that uh, uh, so uh, yeah inevitably what happened was uh, uh, the uh, so so okay so in women for instance in leadership positions right in newsrooms so uh, i have worked across uh, multiple newsrooms in television and in in newspapers uh, the very first newsroom that i i worked in had uh, women in um, you know sort of managerial positions uh, these women were also reporting heads uh, they would uh, uh, you know in turn report to uh, the top bosses now the top bosses would largely be male but but there would uh, i mean these would be the top rung of editors so there would actually be like three or four hierarchies so there would be like these 
um so so i'll give you an example of cnbc tv 18 right where i where i worked first like that was my very first newsroom and uh that so it was a divide so it's it's not like females were not in decision making roles uh, that was not the case uh, uh that's not the case in indian media uh, there are women and there are women even uh, at the top um, that way i find uh, you know media to be a little more friendly than absolute corporate setups because uh, i had an oxfam report which had counted corporate set up harassments to women and in media at least i find journalists very vociferous i find journalists uh you know speaking their mind out and therefore uh you know even if we have to quit for instance we actually make our point and quit so it has it has never been that that we have been suppressed you know like women have not been suppressed uh, systematically in newsrooms that doesn't i mean that that is not been the my experience uh, at least or 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 experience of many of our friends right uh, yeah okay uh, there is a comment from nahid khalid from pakistan uh, nahid says that it is very different in pakistan as females do not outnumber men in newsrooms mostly decision making editor bosses marketing advertising top bosses executive board rooms they have all a predominant male dominance so nahid yeah you are you are absolutely right and i think that's the case in india as well um we often attribute the term malik or seth to uh, you know like uh, our top uh, sort of um, you know people who are owners of media houses now for instance uh, but however um, they have women as well so uh, for instance if you take hindustan times then one of the very influential owners is you know shobhana bhartia you know she is a female uh, however in z up till very lately uh, the top uh, the owner was subhash chandra agarwal he is a very noted uh, entrepreneur so so you know like we saw in newsrooms his daughter in law also coming in and then calling in the shots the but the problem here is not that they are male or female the problem here is that they are driven by a common um, you know sort of a goal of making money right uh, and and i have seen women at top positions also uh, you know especially if they are owners or they are in these executive board rooms uh, being extremely uh, driven by economical gains so so and and as journalists we are totally cut off from you know that uh, level of ownership so so what 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 we end up doing is we end up bearing the brunt of it and doing what we are told to do in terms of you know how to churn out news right nahit so uh, i don't know if that answers your question but uh, but yeah you're right uh, we have uh, uh, dr ramesh chan shukla here uh, amongst the audience and he is uh, director at all india radio uh, lucknow uh, dr shukla would you share what is the ratio of uh, uh, male to female uh, 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 staff uh, all india uh, radio could you comment please please unmute yourself if you if you could listen to your comment no you are not All right. Meanwhile, we have a question from uh, Rita Vidya Dana. She is a very senior journalist and former editor of Jakarta Post uh, from Indonesia, and she says, "Matre, you said there is no gender gap in your news organization in terms of number of male and female journalists. But does that necessarily mean that the male have gender sensitive perspectives when deciding news and any decisions?" Uh, so, hi, Rita. Uh, 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 yeah. So, I'll give you an example of. Uh, uh mumbai mirror okay uh mumbai mirror uh, uh i don't know like just just does that name ring a bell uh, how many uh, people can say yes or no in the chat box uh, have you heard of this publication called uh, mumbai mirror yeah all right so uh, sumita says yes so mumbai mirror was uh, was i'm saying because uh, you know they have nearly discontinued now it's it's a publication of the times of india group which is one of the largest um, publications uh, in terms of uh, money and outreach uh, around the entire world and uh, uh, mumbai mirror was a 
सिटी टैबलॉइड ऑल राइट एंड मुंबई मिर वॉज लेड बाय एन एडिटर नेम्ड मीनल बघेल हु वॉज दी एडिटर इन चीफ ऑफ दिस पेपर दॅट मीन दॅट she was the one who was calling the shots okay so here is a woman calling the shots right uh, i'm just digressing a little bit and giving an example uh, to rita's question and then uh, uh, you know coming back to uh, uh, but that's because i want this conversation to be example led uh, so so there was a particular way in which mumbai mirror would cover uh, uh, violence against women uh, uh, you know uh, rape for instance and and the fact that they had to be sensational okay so this tabloid particularly what it did was it went ahead all right and published a photograph of a house where this minor was raped and uh, gave the name of the town along with a photograph of the house uh which made it very easy for the location where this victim stayed to be identifiable right and the editor was a woman okay so uh and i don't know if it was a slip up on on this woman editor side but she was questioned by us on how could you you know like be so insensitive in terms of this and 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 she had so much ego like you know she literally defended uh, i i don't exactly remember what she said but but she spoke on both sides right so uh i i in my experience have found that it's not necessarily uh uh you know males having gender insensitive uh, approaches uh, all the time uh but you know it's 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 rather more a dynamic where for instance an editor could be a female or a male a reporter could be a female or a male uh but what i mean to say is that it is a dynamic between a reporter and editor and if either of them is sensitive then you could save the publication but uh, you know if if for instance they are not then what happens is that it's if if even if a male reporter is a male editor is insensitive it's my duty you know if i am a sensitive so so i don't necessarily see journalism with a gender bias but i see it more as a problem of training right so if 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 say it, it's a male editor or a female editor it's a male reporter or a female reporter but they are trained on how to report on for instance violence against women men you know like uh, uh, irrespective of the gender and how to portray it in the media i think that training is more lacking than males not having a gender sensitive perspective when they decide on news right uh, or any decision because you know honestly a rape is a rape and it will if it will be featured on the front page it's just that how you feature it is 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 a problem that needs to be tackled editorially right okay thank you